Fight fans, we are fresh off of 302. I'm sorry, this is actually a little bit of a later post. I wouldn't call it too, too fresh. But we are off that fight card. And let's just say it wasn't the greatest fight card. But we're here to talk about the two fights that are the most talked about. And the um, fights I'm talking about are the main event you had Islam Makachev taking on, defending his belt against Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Guys, it actually was a pretty good fight. You know, it really was. You know, they had Dustin the Diamond Poirier, his odds against him. They had him pretty much uh, like if he was going to get annihilated. But at the end of the day, Dustin Poirier put up a hell of a fight. You know, he gave Islam Makachev all he can handle in that fight. It was actually a really good, really good um, competitive contest. Somewhat competitive, I should say. You know, Islam pretty much dominated in some sense um, the majority of the fight. But, you know, Dustin Poirier had some moments and Dustin Poirier showed a lot of heart. A lot of courage and Dustin Poirier was not going to go out without a without a fight you know it pretty much went almost as expected regarding the wrestling you know Islam Makachev was able to take um, Dustin Poirier down quite a few times with ease in the first couple of rounds but then um, Dustin Poirier was able to box Islam Makachev quite a bit you know he actually connected a few good shots that hurt Islam cut him on the eye you know pretty much landed at elbow I want to say in the fourth round it could have been where it pretty much opened a big old gash in the middle of his forehead you know it was it was a war it was a war guys you know you can look at um Islam Makachev though Islam Makachev was um definitely no punk you know this was a real tough test for him I've never seen Islam Makachev hurt like that We've seen him, you know, where the the rounds didn't go completely his way. We remember that highly competitive contest that he had with uh, Volkanovski. But um, this one, he was actually hurt. Where he had to deal with some type of adversity uh, in order to regain and retain his title. And that's what he did. You know, he was hurt in that with that eye shot, which he was a little bit hurt. Um, couldn't see then he was really hurt when it came to that big old gash that he had in the middle of his forehead so yeah there was a lot of things there was a lot of obstacles that is on Makachev had to go to um so I enjoyed the main event I hope you guys did too so what's next for Islam Makachev well he has a number one contender fight with Armin Sarukian um Armin Sarukian beat Charles Oliveira to be the number one contender to fight Islam Makachev um there's that or he's all talk, talking about the potential of moving up to welterweight and taking on quite possibly Leon Edwards or Bilal Muhammad, whoever that just so happens to win the belt by that time. So we don't know, guys, but we we do know that um, he is he has a lot of options. We know that Islam Akhtar has a great deal of options that he can do whatever he wants to do. He is a great fighter. He's definitely um, one of the very best lightweights of all time. Uh, I really do enjoy him fighting. You know, a lot of people a little bit are not the uh, are not too keen on him uh, fighting because of the whole Habib and everything like that. How it's a little bit boring and such. But not me. Not me. Honestly, I enjoy. He actually has some really good stand up. He has some really good um, really good fights. Yes, sometimes he does tend to you know keep his opponent to the ground and hold him for a little bit too longer but at the end of the day hey it's still a really good contest that he puts on a really good show each and every time he shows up on the co-main event well excuse me before we get to the co-main event let's talk about Dustin Poirier he's talking about potentially retiring guys and what do we say to that you know Dustin Poirier must see TV Dustin Poirier one of the the most hardcore legends in the UFC, I would say. The guy is never in a boring fight. Even when he loses, he's never in a boring fight. He's always in a very fun, action-packed fight. Um, I never miss a Dustin Diamond Poirier fight. Um, you know, so would he retire? I mean, he's done what he needed to do in the sport. No, he did not win the Undisputed Championship. He won the Interim Championship. He's made a lot of money, especially with the Conor McGregor fights. He's had some legendary fights, some Hall of Fame fights, for sure. He's a Hall of Famer himself, for sure. So, yeah, does he need to prove anything? No. Do we want to see him fight? Still, yes, absolutely. Again, like I said, he is not boring whatsoever. So, I hope he stays. But if not, I understand 100%. 100% if he wants to, you know, ride off in the sunset and be with his family. In the co-main event, you had Sean Strickland taking on Paulo Costa. Now, this fight did not live up to the hype. This fight did not go as expected. We all kind of thought that um, uh, it was going to be a little bit of a back-and-forth war. We all thought these guys were going to scrap and it turned into a street fight. But no, it was a very uh, highly technical co competitive contest. Well, not, excuse me, not competitive. Maybe in one judge's eyes it was competitive. 
but I just saw Sean Strickland pretty much pick apart um, Paulo Costa. Paulo Costa landed a few shots here and there. Never really truly was in the fight, if you ask me. He had some moments, but I think Sean Strickland's boxing, Sean Strickland's um, unorthodox style was just really too much to handle for um, Paulo Costa. So, yeah, I, I, uh, I was a little disappointed, but I still enjoyed it nonetheless. Nonetheless. So, what's next for Sean Strickland? Well, you got another number one contender fight in the middleweight division taking on uh taking place in uh the 22nd of june um it's either in abu dhabi or saudi arabia one or the other um but that's taking place and that is going to be between robert whittaker taking on hamza chamayev so with that being said he uh he could potentially be a number one contender but he would have to wait and see how this fight transpires he would have to wait and see how things uh, work out with uh, those two fight those two fighters. You know, Robert Whitaker and Hamza Chimaev. If Robert Whitaker and Hamza Chimaev go to a draw, or maybe the fight ends up being a complete dud, then I could see a potential <clears throat> matchup with Sean Strickland uh, being the number one contender. But if it just so happens to be, uh, you know, Hamza Chimaev and uh, Robert Whitaker end up, end up having a complete blowout, complete all action fight then yes i can see the potential of it of one of them being the number one contender so it's really all, all up in the air to see who's going to be who what's going to be um or who's going to be next in line to face ddp for his middleweight championship of the world there you have it guys ufc 302 was actually not too bad of a fight night or uh, excuse me not too bad of a pay-per-view it could have done a little bit better but at the end of the day still you know we get what we get i enjoyed it definitely check it out look at the youtube channels look at the highlights definitely let me know what your opinions are and such like subscribe hit that notification button and i'll see you guys in the next video